Hi everyone and welcome to Rage Print. I'm Andy and in this episode we're going to build a new droid. Surprise, surprise. Uh, this is the droid from the new TV show Overwhelmed Kenobi, which from my point of view gets released tomorrow. Uh, this is, uh, you might not have seen it on the adverts, but it's a little droid that's reminiscent of batteries not included. Um, and it's been affectionately known as the bug droid. Um, it's also appeared in the VW ID Buzz advert that has R2, 3PO and Ewan, Ewan McGregor. Um, so if you've seen the advert, you know the one I'm on about. Uh, the files were released yesterday, uh, which is the 25th of May, uh, by Droid Division, who are responsible for the Pit Droid, um, K2SO, the Rat Catcher, the B1 Battle Droids, and uh, uh, a couple of other ones. Sorry, Dave, can't remember. Basically, Dave's done a load of droids, and um, he released this one yesterday uh, for to celebrate Celebration in Anaheim. And uh, so the printers went overnight, and uh, they've just finished. So this, that's how big it is. So um, I'll be. It should be a fairly quick build, so we should be able to just build it, paint it, put some LEDs in it, and job done. It shouldn't take long. So it should be all done in one episode. Um, yeah, why don't you join me and see how we get on? Okay, right. As I said in the intro, the printers were going overnight, um, and they're done. And this is literally it. Um, we have the stand, and the stand base that goes in there. Uh, I should point out that all I've done is taken off the printer and I've ripped the brims off. I haven't sanded anything yet, so it still needs sorting. But yeah, stand goes in like that. Um, there's not many pieces at all. You've got the main body, you've got a uh, mouth plate, and then you've got the lower body back, lower body front. It's kind of just trying to hold it together. And yeah, it creates that little mouth there. It, it, it's very much batteries not included, isn't it? Um, then you've got a, an eye lens that goes there, uh, another eye lens that goes there. You can put some LEDs in here. Uh, I need to get, uh, I need to make a little lens here. I'm not sure I'm going to do that yet. Um, I don't have any small enough baubles or anything. Uh, anyway, and then you've got the, oh, and you've got the wings. Oh, oh yeah, I've got the helpers on, so I'm not going to put quite properly. But yeah, you've got the wings on that go like this. So, oh, I'm not doing this very well. Tell us. Do it like this. Um, you've got the wings that go on like this. Uh, so you can either have them shut like that, or you've got the little hinges, and they just literally slot in uh, like this. You get them right, right way around. There is a, a way around for them. And also they need to be cleaned off so they slot in properly. There you go. And then the hinge just goes on like that. And then you can just adjust it how you want. So if you want it slightly more open, you can. Slightly more closed, you can. Um, and then these dowels uh, are to join pieces together. So they sort of go in here and I think that one there or there. or I've got the instructions up so I'll read it properly. Um, that is it. That is literally it. Um, this won't take long to build. It's, just, it's going to take me longer to clean up the parts, I think. Uh, small dowels go in there. Like that. So small dowels and that puts that bit together. Uh, I can't see why you can join those together if you wanted to print them with Fusion and print them that way around. I, yeah, don't see why not. Um, there's probably a reason. Uh, I imagine actually to smooth this. That look, that's a lot smoother, uh, and then that's got the the layer lines from where it's created the circle. Um, either way, that's it. That, that 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 is it. So I'm going to clean all these off, and I'm going to start putting it together. As I said, this is you can see here. It's not very hard. Uh, I think an LED will go there, and an LED will go in there. And then just run the wires through down here. And Dave did say he put a 
a slot for the wiring to go through into the base, but that kind of blocks that. Um, all right, yeah, we'll see. Get on with it. Yeah, Mark could be quick. Um, so he's not glued in there, and he's not glued. Um, this bit's not glued to that bit. Um, just easy to paint. So it's just held in by a dowel. Uh, I also haven't glued the eye lenses in uh, because I'm not sure how I'm going to do the lens yet. Um, I don't know if I'm going to. I don't want to glue this in and find that I need to take this out to do, do, do the lens. Um, the hinges are glued to the back side of the wings but not to the body itself so I can adjust this. Um, that side is a little easier to adjust than this side. Uh, but overall, that's looking good. That took me about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. No, I'm sure I'm cleaning the bottom of the base off. but. Uh, I've also realised that I've got the aerial missing. I'm not sure what that is. I might just be a bit of filament, but I'll double check the files and I'll set it off to print. So, uh, lenses and the aerial, and um, that's ready for painting. Yeah, we're there already. Ready for painting. So, I've been having a think about the lens here. And I think I'm going down the route to BB-8. So this is just one of these uh, covered masking tape. And I'm going to put the ring around it. I've no idea if this is going to work. Just draw around there. Oh, of course now it's moved, it's not going to be in the right place. So just draw around it. Going to need deep bearing anyway, but there we go. So basically, just draw around like that. I'm going to get my Dremel out and just cut this side of the line and just cut that out, and hopefully, that will fit on this side of there. I have no idea how I'm going to do that lens. I mean, guess I could do it out one of those. I think that might just be a key first flat bit of plastic. Anyway, Dremel. Oh, um, the aerial. There's no file for the aerial. So I'm going to assume from the pictures everyone else has been using, it's using a bit of filament. So that's just a spare bit of filament stuck in and then when I'm ready for I'll just glue it in. Um, I don't know what Dave's intention was for that, but there we go. And another thing, actually. Um, electronics wise, uh, this Electronics wise, if you want the lights to light up and then there's a channel in here, you see the channel there for the light wires come out, you need to replace this with a 10mm hollow tube and then the wiring can go down and through. Alternatively, you could actually put the electronics in there and it just becomes greebles and that, but up to you I suppose. Now I'm going to do this. So that's the first initial cut. I haven't taken the mask and take off yet, so we will need to shave away. So let's see. Yeah, way too big, as I thought. Okay, cut a bit more away. Right, <clears throat> so I shaved that down. Uh, I actually ended up uh, tracing the inside diameter and then adding a slight bit so. so uh, basically tracing the outside diameter and the inside diameter and uh, sort of going about halfway in between and shaved up to that line. Um, so let's... Still wearing those. Um, oh, that is all cloudy. And then let's have a look. Oh. Well, that fits, so... Let's take the masking tape off. Okay. And 
first. Oh, it's cat. I don't want to break it. So I think I see the way I'm going to do this. I'm going to push fit the lens in and glue the ring. But there we go. Uh, so I thought about how I'm going to do this one. I was going to cut another section out of one of these, but the, the curve would be wrong. And actually, that's a, a waste of a sphere just for a tiny little bit. I've got a couple of these plastic pots hanging around. So I'm just going to cut a bit out of that. And, not right in the middle, but I'm going to cut a bit out of that and, do, and use that instead. So uh, I'll get on with that, and then I'll cut back when I've, when I've done it. Right. Stuff's too thin, it's, it's never going to hold. So I think in this case, I am going to 3D print a lens in clear filament, which means, yes, it will be um, uh, obscured, diffuse, but honestly, I don't think that one really matters too much on that one. Put the clear lens here, and then we just have a nice diffuse lens there, so almost like a PSI or hollow projector or something like that. So um, yeah, I'll set that off to print. So yeah. Um, so I said that's now ready for painted. Got the lens, which means I can do the LED. I'll have the other lens sorted soon, and we're ready to go. So the next time you see this, it will be sprayed in spray potting. Uh, this stuff. Um, sorry, you uh, uh, US guys, you can't get this. Um, this is basically a, a very high build putty spray putty uh, rather than using high build primer this just coats it and then you just sand it down it's a lot quicker um, the other thing I could use which I don't have but I keep it to try it is something called Replicote which I saw at TCT in October um, probably a bit overkill for this but anyway uh, oh the only other thing I have to do we'll just turn this that way is I don't know if you can see but Right there, got a bit of lift on the print. I just need to fill these lines in. Um, yes, yeah, just, just those two lines. And then, um, whoop, and then uh, yeah, and then we're ready for putty. So yeah, I think the next step is cut that, uh, print that, and then we'll putty it. Here we get one 3D printed transloop translucent lens so that can sit in there and the LED will just get diffused then. Um, so while that's printing I put some uh, Vallejo uh, putty there. Show sure the stuff. That's the stuff John introduced me to when we were doing the uh, losses work recently. Um, Decided to get some and uh, never look back. So wait for wait for that to dry. Um, it's getting late now, so I won't be cutting it today. Um, but yeah, it's um, I, I am actually now ready. So yeah, next time you see it, it will have been sprayed with this and probably sanded as well. Right, so. I've been out and spray puttied it, so this is uh, three layers of spray putty. Um, and see, so I've done the wings, the eyes, taking the lenses out. So that just, just needs the sand now, just to try. So you can still, you can, it probably won't pick up a camera, you can, you can still see that the layer lines to the ridges, but the uh, sanding should get rid of that and just putty ends up below the, the layer lines. Uh, something I found out today, because um, this is the next day, uh, first episode of Kenobi came out. No spoilers, other than the fact I now have a name for this. And it's called Lola. Well, L0LA59. 5958. Lola. So, um, say hi to Lola. Um, yes, yeah, so the next step is just to sand these down. And uh, then we can. Prime it and 
time it paint it. Get it. So I've just finished sanding. Um, I gave this about, as I said before, about three or four like coats of that. And then I've gone over it with uh, sanding pads. So I st um, did this bit first, started off with 100 and worked my way up to 220 grit. I probably went a bit too aggressive. Uh, what doesn't matter too much because um, it's the bottom. No one's really going to see it. Um, but when it came to doing the top, I skipped and went straight from one and just started with 180. And that's given a much nicer, smooth finish. I can't feel any panel lines, uh, layer lines. There's a couple there, but I'm not too worried. And, uh, sorry, I've flying it. And uh, I just rescribed all the panel lines using the, using that. So this is now ready for oh, a bit missing. This is there is. I think this is now ready for um, priming. So we're going to prime it with Alfred's Grey Primer. It's in there somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to spray a Alfred's Grey Primer and then um, get onto the painting. Uh, I've reprinted that rod. I've hollowed it out with a 6mm hole through the middle. So now when that goes through like that, I can just run some wires through out the back and dump the LEDs. Um, I've, I've actually been playing around with um, now, now that the first episode of Obi-Wan first two episodes of Obi-Wan are out about trying to get about trying to get um, some sounds in here not a lot of room is there the thing is Hasbro yesterday announced that there's a toy of this which is about the same size and they're claiming animatronic and it's like, so what, how have they done the animatronic of it? Um, and I think all the electronics are probably in this bit here. Or oh, this is hollowed out. Uh, incidentally, the toy also... Um, put the mouth back together. Uh, whereas that just compresses together, because that's all Dave knew at the time. The toy seems to sort of open out a bit. So this black ring here, or what will be black, kind of expands. So I'm wondering if the electronics are sort of hidden in this black ring or sort of in here. Um, I imagine the battery compartment's in there. Oh, by the way, this has legs. We found out it has legs. Um, so Dave's already released... So this is out of date already. Dave's already released a, a, an update where um, that has another hole in it and then there's just this, a pair of legs that you can just you know, plug into it. So effectively, it uses, um, just plugs into it so you uses that hole um, so yeah I, I'm not, to be honest I'm not fussed by the legs I'm quite happy to sit on the stand I'm more interested about trying to get to light up um, so there's, there's an LED in there there's an LED in there and the LED should be two up sometime soon and I could just run a couple of LEDs or resistors down there and power bank out the back in fact that's what I've ordered to do but I'm thinking about sound as well, and I keep thinking about um, oh, what they're called. Um, greetings cards. You know, if the greetings cards and it starts playing, start playing a song, a song or a, a message, birthday message. I'm wondering if the guts of one of those would fit in here, and it would literally have to fit between this part here. And this part here, so just sort of slide in there. Um, admittedly, it means you'll be able to see it, you know, because once you know the wings are in, and you'll be able to see it. Still, need to sound out a bit more to get the wings in. Um, but would that matter? Probably not. Just you could put more greeblies around it to just make it look um, a bit more you know, Star Warsy, while hiding the fact there's electronics there. Don't know. I I'm going to consider that one. I think the easiest thing to do is put just put LEDs and wind down through, and then that will be done for now. Um, and look at getting a get one of these things. So I had a quick look at the cards, back to things, and um, one of them is um, push button, which you know would work. But uh, the other one I saw was light activated. 
And I'm thinking, well, you could activate it by saying, right, the wings are closed, there's no light, it turns off. You open up the wings, there's now light, it starts talking. Um, I'd have to adjust the hinges to allow that to happen. I'm not quite sure how much room I've got in there to do the hinges. It doesn't look like a lot. I don't know. Doesn't look like I can close the hinges otherwise. Okay, so that idea might not work. Uh, the other options, an Arduino. The smallest Arduino I can think of, a DF mini player and a speaker. It doesn't have to be loud. And a little lithium ion battery. Or am I overcomplicating it? Probably. Let's get him painted first. Her. Her. Let's get her painted. And then we'll worry about electronics. So next time you see this, it should be primed. Right, there we are, primed. Uh, just need to let that dry and then spread, uh, spread the other side. And probably the same with that. But that's primed. They're primed. I'm gonna leave them to dry for about 10, 20 minutes. Do the other side of that, and then we'll immediately start painting. Right, the primer's nearly dry. Um, I just had to redo a bit there. So I spray painted the base just black, and that's just uh, army painted black. Doesn't need to be any more fancy than that. It looks quite smart actually. So I just looked at the colours. Uh, so according to the screenshots and now the toy that's out, that's silver. It's the main ring. The small eye ring is white. That appears to be completely silver. And then so you can see there's a sun out. Uh, that's white, that's red, same on the other side, and then on Lola herself. So I get myself out of the shot. Um, red, white, it's very simple. And then as I said before, I don't know how it works. Come on, focus. Focus on the droid, thank you. The black the line here, which is now going out of focus again. Um, that's going to be black, so I'm probably going to hand paint that, including the black in the eye as well. I think that would just be easier. So yeah, let's get on with it. Okay, so that's the whites on. Under those bits as well. That's silver on there. And I'm going to have to respray the stands because I didn't think that far ahead. Uh, the inside, probably going to hand paint silver or black to match the inside of the eye. Uh, I went a bit heavy handed on the white, I always do. It's, it's the plastic coat, just tends, just tends to get really heavy handed. So I've just got to leave this dry now. Luckily it's nice and sunny. So as long as I don't let the PLA melt, it should be fine. And then uh, once it's fully dry, or dry enough for me to mask, I'll uh, do the red. Yeah, oh, just in case you're wondering. So the white I'm using um, satin, plastic coat satin white, the silver, I'm using what silver I had left over, that's my old car colour, so plenty of that hanging around. Uh, as I said before, the black is just army painter black primer, and the red when I come to use it will be that. So it's just colours I happen to have in the house. So yeah, I'm going to leave this dry now. Right, I've masked these bits off, and now we're just going to spray in red. Oh, and I've sprayed the other side of the wing silver. Right, that's been sprayed red. And it's a lot lighter than Lola is on the show, but actually, I quite like that. So let's dry for a couple of minutes and I'll rip the mask and tape off. Well, make sure I haven't missed any bits, but yeah, and I think we're nearly done. Right, so that's the main painting done. I've um, put a load of wings back in. I had to sand out the inside of the hinges slightly. I've already had to do some touch-ups of the red where the mask and tape is ripped off or I miss with a spray. Um, there are a couple of bleed-throughs which I'm slightly annoyed about, but um, 
I just realised that all these panel lines should be black, so they're going to end up getting um, painted anyway. That's going to be black, and that the inside's going to, that's going to be black, um, and inside this is going to be silver. So I'm not too worried about like this overspray here. Um, but yeah, I like this. Uh, I've already noticed it's my first casualty of the painting season, and that the uh, base has warped in the sun. So it's no big worry, I could just leave it or I could just print a new base. Um, it won't take long to print a new base. Um, oh, my phone's going nuts. So yeah, uh, yeah, there are a few. Like, I've, I've had to use this to do the touch-ups, which is a paintbrush, and you can see where I've painted it. But normally I wouldn't be too worried because it will be weathered. However, um, this is a clean, brand new toy. Toy toy droid it's for a kid um without giving too much away so um it's not dirty it's not got the usual star wars dirt it's bright it's clean it's, it's very reminiscent of the phantom menace where everything was new and bright and clean and shiny and, and good um before the dark times um yeah so weathering's not going to quite go to work as it normally would but we'll see so I'm going to let it cure properly a bit more and then I need to paint the black under there and in there and there and, and uh, do the silver somehow. Um, it shouldn't take too long to paint it silver. Big brush. And then um, electronics. Uh, so while I was painting the electronics arrived and I'm just going really simple. It's got a box of LEDs, so I just want two blue LEDs, um, then the fuse ones, I want the ultra bright ones which I think are these ones, I'll, I'll know when I open it, and um, just a uh, pack for AA batteries. So the plan so far is uh, to just run wiring through there, and the battery pack will come out the back here. It's a shame I can't put it inside the base. Maybe that's a mod. I've got a new do a new base, so mod the base to fit a battery pack in it. That's not a bad idea. Anyway, yeah, so wires come through there and then they'll come back up in through the droid under here. Yeah, under here. And then just two wires go uh, a set of wires going off to um, each LED with a resistor to knock the power down accordingly. Um, while I'm here, let's uh, do this live on camera and first myself afterwards. Let's put the lens back in. It's going to be good. And put this lens back in. Again, that's looking good. I like that. Um, go on, let, let's let's do it now. Just because I'm being impatient. Right, so that's going to be pressure fit. So I won't do that until the paint's properly cured. Don't want to accidentally scratch anything. And what about you? You're quite no, you're going to be pressure fit as well. So that's fine. I'll I'll push them in properly once the LEDs in. Um, Try to keep touching it. So that's the plan. That's that's the plan so far. Until I can work out how to do the sounds with the greeting card thing, whether that works or not, I don't know. Um, we shall see. So next time you see this, hopefully I'll have painted the black and maybe do a bit of shading to get the panel lines in and. Um, yeah, probably probably lacked it as well. So yeah, see you a bit. Hmm. Anyway, I painted the inside of the eye black and the inside of this eye black. The underneath of there is black. I've repainted the hinges silver, or at least up until a point. I painted the inside of this silver, and it looks alright on camera, but in person it is really streaky. I think it's probably because where I'm trying to paint on top of this 
uh, plastic coat white which is quite shiny and smooth and is also picking up every single fingerprint that goes on it. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to leave this dry. I'm not going to touch it again uh, if I can help it. I um, don't know what I'm going to do about the white. I kind of wanted the white to stay clean, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, not unless I spray some plastic coat white and actually just brush it on. I might just do that. And then I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it and let it dry. Oh, and then I'll do. Um, use, uh, if you don't know, that's Games Workshop paint for painting miniatures. I'll use that for the shading. Yeah. And then we'll put it back together. Um, there we go. So the it's been around. So the silver's been painted. That's two coats. <clears throat> it's still looking scratchy on the inside, but. I'm not worried for the moment because I will be putting greebies and or electronics in there. Um, the, I, the eye's not stuck down yet, neither is this one's just placed in just so you can see what it looks like. Um, I am half tempted to repaint the red because uh, where I've been using the pen, uh, the touch-up pen, it looks different to the spray, um, so I might re um, remask it and spray it. I have done the panel lines using, um, as I said, Games Workshops. Non oil, no, 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 no. Um, and just gently dabbed it in the lines and then just rubbed it. And yes, it's left dirty marks on the outside, but then that's how dirt accumulates, isn't it? The dirt gets in the in the bits, and then you start rubbing it away, and you know, and then you just try rubbing it away. And that's, that's how you get the group of marks. And yes, even though it's supposed to be more or less brand new, um, I imagine still 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 some dirty marks on there. Um, the only thing I haven't done yet is, and I can't find it, there is. Uh, I'm currently using a tiny bit of filament for the, the, an, the antenna. Uh, other people have used like brass rod or something, but I'm just going to use a. I've got some black filament somewhere, I'm just going to use some black filament and stick it in. And I think uh, I may put a cap on it. I've got. Um, actually. Let's see. Dio's antenna would work, you know, just because that's just a bit of a, with a stick on it with a bump on the end. I think I just print a new bit of that. Um, so I don't know how well this is going to show on camera, but if I, it does show. You see that little light, that light bit there? That's coming in from there. So when the LED's in there, that's going to be like a blue glow oh, underneath. Again, I've just done the non oil just to you could do the panel lines. Overall, I'm really pleased with this. Um, I do need to spray it with lacquer just to protect it because it's going to chip and I don't want it to chip. Um, and then it's just, I think for now, just for this video, LEDs, and then later on, I might revisit doing the. Um, the greetings card thing if I can find uh, an idea that works. Uh, some people have been chopping these hinges slightly shorter so they can push the wings down a bit more. That might mean my idea using the light sensitive uh, cardboard would work. Cardboard? Light sensitive greeting card chip board would work. Um, yeah, so I'm going to let this dry overnight, give it a spray of lacquer and then when we come back um, I'll just quite quickly put some put some LEDs in. Just have the wires come out the back, and then we're done. I'm happy to say this is done for now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm liking it. It really needs noise, doesn't it? It needs a little, little sound. But <laughs> All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so Lola is currently drying. Um, she's been sprayed with uh, clear lacquer. So I'm keeping an eye on it because it's about to rain. So I just might have to dash out any second, pause the recording to bring it in. But yeah, she's drying. She's just the second coat of uh, lacquer on. Now, my original plan was to use that. But it only gives me three volts. 
And the reason I was going to use that is because I've bought loads of string LED lights, you know, like the fairy lights. Um, I put some in my Enterprise model kit and it lit up well, and they're just it's effectively that. Uh, my son has a has a string of fairy lights with the letters of his name on, um, as does my daughter. And again, it's just a string of fairy lights running on that. And I thought, well, that's fine. That's all I want to do. Just a couple of LEDs powering off one of these with the wires coming out the back of the stand. So of course, I start diving into electronics, into LEDs, and you start finding out about voltage drops. And it's, okay, so of course, the voltage drop for a blue LED is more than the power I'm supplying in through the in through this in through the battery. So we go for nine volt. So I've got a nine volt connector, nine volt. Just done the resistance values that I need. Uh, I've gone to the kittronic.co.uk website and there's an LED resistor value calculator on there. And you can pick this sort of LED that you want. So I've, I've gone for a standard LED blue 5mm, which is that one. And two of them, I said, right, I want two of them. I'm inputting 9 volts. The LED forward voltage, they put is 3.1 volts on this sheet here from Elegoo, which is the LED kit that I bought. They're saying the blue clear 5mm, which is these ones. Uh, yeah, those two there. The forward voltage is 2.8 to 3.2. So let's, let, let's sort of go in the middle, so let's say what they've got, 3.1. And 20 milliamps, but, and that's what the calculator's come up with, 20 milliamps. So it calculates the resistor I need, and it says they're in parallel, which is what I'm doing. And I need a 150 ohms resistor, which is the brown, green, brown. Just the kit. Um, I've just got to find 150 ohms now. Uh, so I'll come back to that. Right, I found the ones I want. Um, doesn't match what they got on there. They got brown, green, brown. Uh, brown, green, brown. Uh, according to my resistor kit, brown is one, green is five, brown be one again. So that's 151. So on my kit here, it's uh, brown, so one, green, five, and then black, which is zero, so 150. And the multiplier is black, which is uh, one ohm. And then there's the um, there's a final brown, which is plus or one plus uh, or minus 1%, so 150, it says 150 on there, so that's going to use these two of those, and this is not an electronics, <laughs> I'm no way a good electronics person, I make it up as I go along and hope that I don't release the magic blue smoke. So the resistor, it goes on the positive end, and then both the positive ends will connect to the positive wire, obviously. And then the negative wire will connect to both the negative LEDs. Um, going back to sound, you may have noticed I've got a little speaker here. I've also got this Adafruit FX soundboard, which would be perfect. Um, all that fits in, in the back of Lola. Perfect. That's fine. It's brilliant. Battery would have to go down through the stand for now, so I could probably put a lithium ion battery in there. So that all fits. It's brilliant. Um, However, using the 9 volt battery to get enough power to power everything, I then need to put a uh, buck converter in there. So that's another thing to say about that big. You started to squeeze space. Um, yeah. So, not, I'm not quite sure. I think when I come to actually put the sound in, because there are actually no sound files yet, I'd have to rip this simple circuit out that I'm doing and then look again at this bit. Um, but this would be perfect on its own. Um, you can just put sound, sound files on there and there's a random function. The problem being the random function is that every time a button is pressed. So essentially for a toy that's brilliant. And I imagine that's how the uh, Lola Hasbro toy works. There's something similar to this and every time someone pushes the button on the side it just does the random, you know, just goes random sound. Um, I'm of the opinion of I just want to turn the thing on and it just randomly plays the sound every every I don't know, minute or so so we're back to having an enlarged Arduino so I don't mind that that's 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 a nice little setup it's quite easy 
Um, so it would just be power, power, speaker, and uh, transmit, receive on there. Actually, just even transmit. And that would be done. Um, the only issue being is, is power. I need 5 volts into here, which means I need a, a buck converter. That would change the resistance, the resistance values on here as well. Let's just power them straight off the battery. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put this aside. That's a headache for the time. Let's just make them light up. So I'm going to solder some resistors onto here. Extend the wiring out. Um, Lola should be dry enough for me to be able to bring her back in. And then um, next time you see her, she should have her little blue LEDs in. Um, yeah. Right, uh, this took me way longer than it should because I was still trying to get um, yeah, that to work. All that will fit in there. Or at least I did before I put the wiring in. Um, I still might revisit it. And you may notice there's a yellow and brown wire here. That's because I've uh, hot glued a speaker just under there. Um, future proofing. So the LEDs are in, and literally just the LEDs with the resistors. I, I, I haven't done any of this yet. I might end up putting the five. Uh, yeah, I might end up putting the five volt thing here, but we'll see. So um, let me just turn it around, and hopefully. I'm hoping this works. There we go. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but just here. It's the light that's coming from there is coming down through the little hole. And then that's lighting up as well. So let me just... Uh, And that's an ultra bright LED as well, because yeah, why not? Um, so yeah, that's that's done. All I need to do now really is just uh, cut that down and solder that to it, so what two heat shrink things ready. And I keep looking here and going, how can I get these in? I mean, yeah, they fit. A bit tweaking, but they fit. And all I need is just a couple of wires. It's so tempting. So tempting. But no, I'll leave it for now. I've got it working. That's the point of the video, get it working. I've given myself a bit of future proofing and I can still take the bottom off if I need to. I don't want to take it back out again. Um, but yeah, that's, that's done. Um, let's put the wings back in. The other thing I might do is uh, chop these hinges down very, very slightly so I can um, I'm saying that, I quite, quite like that light. I might chop them a bit slightly so I can actually more or less close it. Um, I think it quite like that. And somewhere, where's it gone? There we go. Um, I've got that, which is, this is off Dio. It, it broke and I just never put it back on again. Um, so all of those painted the ends white. Uh, as Lola has, and that will just get glued in there like that. You can see that. Okay, I'll just get glued in there like that. So let me just hook the battery up again. There we go, so that's Lola all together. LEDs on. But I am really pleased. I'm really pleased that it's not the dark enough to do this, but uh, the, the, the light's going to alter it. But... Yeah, I'm really pleased with this. Um, as I said, I'll probably revisit this at some point to um, the, ele the electronics. It it's, should be relatively simple, to be honest. but. We'll see. 
Um, yeah, complete plus also, as I said, there's no sound yet. But I'm pleased with this. Yeah, I'm dead pleased with it. So, if you want to make your own one, if you've ordered something from Droid Division already, and I've, uh, off the top of my head, it's the realistic looking pit droid, not the animated one. Uh, the smelter droid, uh, K2SO, and there's another one. Uh, there's, basically, there's a few droids where if you if you've bought that droid, uh, if you go back to the link from the PDF, so you go back to the Dropbox file, uh, you'll see that the AA bug droid is in there. Um, as I said, since the since I've started building this, and it, you know, even just in a couple of days. Um, the file's been updated, so you now got the legs, so the bottom is very slightly different, and um, where you've got the dowel going through the middle here, uh, to connect the top to the, to the bottom, then you've now got the hole going all the way through to put the legs in, and the legs just pop on, and you can just stand it up. That would make powering it slightly harder. Um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, it, it's, available for, it's available for free at the moment, as the time of this recording. Um, if you've already purchased something from Droid Division, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Dave makes it a separate file, uh, because there's a lot of people asking, "Can I have it? Can I have it? Can I have it?" And they haven't bought anything from Droid Division yet, so you know, the obvious solution is make it a little payable file, 10, 15 pounds. That's that's worth it for that. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you do make your own Lola. It is a comment in the video um, or put it on the Droid Division Facebook group and uh, show it off to everybody. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.